Hey, fifth grade, it's Miss Seals back for our next science lab. We are still talking about physical properties. So far, we have discussed um, physical state. Remember when I made the GAC and you decided if it was a solid, liquid, or gas? We talked about relative density with the, the different liquids in the density column. We have talked about solubility and which substances dissolve or don't dissolve in water. This week, we're going to be talking about a new physical property called conductivity. We're actually going to be talking about this this week and next week. This week, we are talking about what we call electrical conductivity. So let's get right into it. Electrical conductivity, and there's your target. I can classify matter based on measurable, testable, and observable physical properties, including the ability to conduct or insulate electrical energy. So what is conductivity? Conductivity is the ability to conduct energy, in this case, electricity or electrical energy. To conduct means to allow energy to pass through it. So what is a conductor? A conductor is a substance or object that allows the flow of energy. Today we are talking about electrical conductors. So these are materials or objects that allow electricity to flow through them. Here are some examples of, of um, electrical conductors. Silver, gold, copper, steel. And this says seawater, but Actually, any type of water is an electrical conductor. That's why you always hear electricity and water don't mix because electricity go, can travel through the water and, and be very dangerous. So all of these materials are what we call electrical conductors. They allow electricity to flow through them. What is an insulator? An insulator is a substance or object that stops or slows the flow of energy. So it's the opposite of a conductor. Today we are talking about elect electrical insulators. So these are materials or objects that stop electricity from flowing through them. Here are some examples. Rubber, glass, oil, di a diamond, and dry wood. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is we're, we are going to be investigating with some different objects and trying to figure out which ones are conductors of electricity and which ones are insulators or stop the flow of electricity. So in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is we need to talk about some, something called an electrical circuit. And we're going to be getting more into circuits um, here in a couple weeks when, we, when we're focused more on energy. This week we're focused more on conductivity and, and the ability to conduct electrical energy, okay? So circuit is a word that just means path. So an electrical circuit is the path that electricity takes, okay? So I'm going to show you a very simple circuit. All circuits need a power source. In this case, in this instance, our power source is going to be a battery. And this battery is in this, what we call a battery holder, okay? So my output is going to be my light bulb. So I need to get the electricity from my light, from my power source, which is my battery, to my light bulb, okay? And the way we do this is by using wires. So the outside of these wires is coated in plastic, Plastic is an electrical insulator. So in, on the inside of this plastic is a type of metal, probably copper, that is an electrical conductor. So the electricity is going to pass from the, from the negative end of the battery, which is the flat side, through the copper wire to the light bulb, Hold on, let me, uh, let me get this so that, there we go. And then I need another wire to get the electricity from the light bulb back to the power source, okay? And I know it's kind of hard for you to tell, but my light bulb has turned on. So that means I have what we call a complete 
or a closed circuit. The electricity is able to flow from the power source to the output, which is the light bulb, back to the power source. So I have a complete or a closed circuit, okay? So I told you we're gonna be testing out some objects today, trying to see which ones are conductors of electricity, which means they allow the electricity to flow through them, which ones are insulators of electricity, which means they stop or slow the flow of energy, okay? So for each object, you're going to be making a prediction about whether it's a conductor or an insulator, and then we're gonna test it out, okay? The first object is called a washer. It looks like this, it's a little piece of metal. It's used to help hold um, uh, screws or bolts into place, okay? It's made of metal. So based on what you saw in the PowerPoint, based on what you already know, I want you to make a prediction. Is a washer a conductor or an insulator? Go ahead and make your prediction. All right, the way I'm going to test this out is I still have my circuit hooked up. I can tell the light bulb is on. That means I have a complete circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect one of my um, wires and I'm going to connect the object to the wire, make sure I have metal touching metal, and then I'm going to connect the object to a metal piece of the light bulb, okay? You can see that the light bulb has turned on. So think about what that means. That means that this object, the washer, is allowing the electricity to flow through it because I still have electricity coming out of the negative end of my battery through the wire, th now through the washer also to the light bulb, back through the other wire and back to the battery. That means that this object is a conductor because it allowed the electricity to flow through it. If I did all of this and that light bulb did not come on, that would mean that this object would be an insulator because it would be stopping or slowing the flow of electricity, okay? So we just found out that the washer is a conductor. It allowed the flow of electricity. Our next object that we're testing out is a toothpick. It's made of wood. Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think the toothpick is a conductor or an insulator? All right, let's find out. I am going to hook it up to my wire, touch it to a metal part of my light bulb, and the light bulb is not turning on. So that means I have broken or opened my circuit. The electricity is coming out of the negative end of the battery through the wire, but then once it's hitting my toothpick, it's stopping and the electricity is not getting to the light bulb and back to the battery. That means that this object is an insulator. It's stopping or slowing the flow of electricity. Wood is a material that is an electrical insulator. It does not allow electricity to flow through it. All right. Next object is aluminum foil. Here's a little tiny piece of aluminum foil. You use this in the kitchen for cooking, baking. We use it to keep our food warm, all that kind of stuff, okay? Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think aluminum foil is a conductor and will allow the flow of electricity or is it an insulator and will stop the flow of electricity? All right, let's find out. Are you ready? I'm gonna connect my wire hmm, hold on let me make it a little bit smaller well hold on Oh, my seals, it disconnected, no wonder. 
There we go. Do you see the light bulb is on now? That's because this wire disconnected. You guys didn't even tell me. Yes, so the aluminum foil is what we call a conductor. It is made of metal, metal or aluminum is a type of metal that is an electrical conductor. We have a complete circuit. I can tell that because my light bulb is on. The electricity is going from the battery through the wire to the light bulb back through the battery. So that means our aluminum foil is an electrical conductor. It allowed the flow of energy. All right. The next one is a paper clip. Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think a paper clip is a conductor or an insulator of electricity? I'm gonna hook it up, make sure I stay attached here. That was embarrassing. Touch it to a metal part of my light bulb holder and my light bulb turns on. There we go. That means my paper clip is allowing the electricity to flow through it. So that means it is a conductor. All right. Next one is a penny. Oh, can't get it out. All right, here's our penny. Make your prediction. Do you think a penny is a conductor or an insulator of electrical energy or electricity? All right, let's find out. Here is our penny. And there we go. Our light bulb turns on. And our that means our penny is a conductor of electricity. The electricity is flowing through it. Um, pennies are made of metal. They are made from a metal type uh, called zinc. They used to be made of copper. They're not made of copper anymore because copper is very, very expensive. Um, so they're not made of copper anymore, but they are made of a different type of metal called zinc and some other ones, I think, but I think zinc is the main one. So another conductor. Next one is a piece of paper. Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think paper will be a conductor and allow the electricity to flow through it? Or do you think it's an insulator and will stop the flow of electricity? All right, hooking it up and touching the paper and the light bulb does not come on. Paper is an insulator. Paper stops the flow of electrical energy. Insulator. All right, we got four more. Next one is a rubber band. Made of rubber, stretchy rubber band. Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think a rubber band would be a conductor or an insulator? All right, got it hooked up, touching it to the metal part of my light and the light is not turning on, which means the rubber band is stopping the flow of electricity. And that means it's an insulator, electrical insulator. All right, we have three more. Next one is a nail, a real nail. Go ahead and make your prediction. Do you think it's going to allow electricity to flow through it? Do you think it's going to stop the flow of electricity? All right, I got it. Got it hooked up. And my light bulb is on. That means it is allowing the electricity to flow through it, which makes it an electrical conductor. Awesome. All right, we have two more. Next one is a brad. You might've heard it called a paper fastener before. You use these like in art projects and things like that. Go ahead and make your prediction. Is the brad going to allow the electricity to flow through it or stop the flow? I'm hooking it up. I'm touching it and the light bulb is on. The brad is an electrical conductor. The electricity is able to flow through it. All right, last one is wax paper. Looks like this. You use it in the kitchen for cooking and baking to kind of keep your um, cookies from, you know, sticking to the, the, what's it called? Cookie sheet or baking sheet. 
All right, go ahead and make your prediction. Is the wax paper going to allow electricity to flow through it or stop electricity? You get it hooked up. And I'm touching it to the metal part of the light bulb. The light bulb is not turning on. That tells me wax paper is an electrical insulator. All right, so let's quickly review the items we saw today. We found out that six of these objects were conductors of electricity. We had the paper clip, the washer, the foil, the brad, the nail, and the penny. All of these objects have one thing in common, and, is that, and that is that they are made up of different types of metals. Metal is a material that is an electrical conductor. That's why wires are made of metal. The inside of the outside is plastic. That's to keep us from getting electrocuted or shocked or hurt. But the inside of it is a is a metal that allows the electricity to flow from the power source or the battery to the output, which in this case was the light bulb. Okay. Plastic is an insulator. That is why they put it on the outside of wires to protect us and keep us from you know, getting injured or something because plastic is a good electrical insulator. Um, and then we saw four items that were insulators, which are the wax paper, the toothpick, the rubber band, and the paper. All of these materials stop or slow the flow of electricity. We have wood, we have rubber, we have paper, and we have like this kind of paper and waxy substance. All of those stop the flow of electricity. Glass is also a good electrical insulator. Plastic is a good electrical insulator. Wool or cotton are good electrical insulators. All of those things stop or slow the flow of electricity. Really quick before we go, I wanna make sure that you understand um, just because we're learning about electricity in the science lab and in science class, that does not mean that you are an expert on electricity. I am not an expert on electricity. Electricity is very dangerous. Electricity can hurt you. So under no circumstances are you to be at home playing around with electricity or batteries or wires or anything like that, okay? Electricity is very, very dangerous and I don't want anybody getting hurt. The items that I have here in the science lab are not strong enough to hurt us. So those students that are in school and coming to the science lab and using these batteries and these wires and things, these are not strong enough to hurt to hurt us. These are learning tools, okay? So they'll even if um, the wires were mixed up or an accident were made with this, it, nobody would get hurt, all right? So please make sure you're being safe. Please make sure you are not playing with electricity at home. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, come back next week. We will be talking about conductivity more, but instead of electrical conductors, we were going to be talking about thermal conductors. So those are items that allow the flow of heat energy. All right, talk to you next time. Bye guys.